Yaklaşık 2 hafta önce İstanbul'da açılan NASA uzay sergisinin bir videosunu, bir vlogunu çekmiştim ben size. Hatta onu şöyle kartlara bırakayım. İzlemeyenler varsa oradan bu videoya gidebilirler. Yine aynı sergide çok farklı bir etkinlik vardı bugün. Avrupa uzay tarihinin en uzun süre uzayda kalmış insanı, astronotu Andre Kuypers bugün orada bir sunum yapmaya, bir röportaj yapmaya dahil olmuştu. Ben ve benim gibi birçok basın mensubu da vardı aslında orada. Ve kendisiyle güzel bir röportaj gerçekleştirdik ama burada röportaja geçmeden önce size kendisini ufak bir tanıtmak istedim. Henüz tanımayanlar için kendisi ESA'da yani European Space Agency, Avrupa Uzay Ajansı'nın Astronotu ve birçok uzay görevinde yer almış isimlerden biri. Bir doktor, aynı zamanda bir astrofizikçi. Kendisi Hollandalı. Kendisinin kısaca böyle neler yaptığından size biraz bahsedeyim. Kendisi iki ayrı görevde toplam 204 gününü uzayda geçirdi. Uluslararası Uzay İstasyonu'nda görevler aldı. Orada birçok deney yaptı, deneyi gerçekleştirdi. Uzay ortamında, yer çekimsiz ortamda vesaire. Kendisinin aynı zamanda birçok fotoğrafı vesaire de internette bulabilirsiniz ki zaten biz de videonun içinde bırakacağız bunları. Ve yaptığı çalışmalarla yani işte Hollanda gibi, Rusya gibi birçok ülkeden de onur madalyası benzeri birçok ödül almış durumda. Böyle çok değerli bir insan ve çok da aslında nasıl diyeyim böyle alçak gönüllü biriydi. Kendisiyle açıkçası tanışma fırsatını yakalayabildiğim için çok memnun oldum. Acayip tecrübelere sahip bir insan. Gelin kendisinden şöyle ufak bir bahsettikten sonra kendisinin bir sunumuna geçelim. Bugün bakalım bize neler anlatmış ve röportajda neler konuşmuşuz kendisiyle Andre Bey'le. Gelin öyle yavaştan sizi oraya götüreyim. Uh, we are here with Andre Kuypers. Uh, forgive me if I uh, pronounce your surname wrong. No, Uh, Kuipers, yes, difficult, <laughs> typically Dutch. <laughs> okay, uh, we would like to we would like to ask you some questions about sure. the uh, space tourism and future of the space tourism. Uh, what are your thoughts about the 20, uh, the things what happened in 2021? Uh, we have seen a lot of things going on. Uh, in terms of space tourism, uh, what do you see about the future? Is it sustainable? Will it be something regular or else? Uh, would you like to share your opinions with us? Well, we have seen in shipping and aviation that uh, these kind of uh, transportation start as an experiment. Things can go wrong. Uh, then it becomes often military. They have a lot of money to put in. Then it becomes traffic, uh, traffic uh, cargo. Uh, and then finally also with passengers. And as it's, if it's safe enough, like with aviation now, you can do that. And same we see in space flight. The private companies that also send up uh, normal civilians, not professional astronauts, but private astronauts. First of all, they have to pay a lot of money, but that will go down. Uh, everything is now more or less automated. So we have even sent up four people in a spacecraft without a professional astronaut. So these things are developing now. Uh, I think it's a normal development, but we have to be sure that it's not too polluting, that we not damage, for example, the ozone layer with, uh, with a lot of rockets going through there uh, to space. So we have, of course, the suborbital flights, These are not really space flight. It's more aviation because you don't get into orbit. Uh, you go to 80 or 100 kilometers. And legally, we said that the space starts there, but you're not uh, you're not uh, in, in orbit around the planet. Uh, so uh, it's a normal development. I think it's okay as long as it's not damaging the uh, the, the environment. Mm -hmm. What will we see for the near future? Uh, what are you expecting about the space tourism uh, for the near future? Maybe we can visit Mars within maybe 100 years. Uh, you may never know. Uh, but if you talk about specifically next 10 years, next decade, uh, what are your expectations? I think in 10 years we will see uh, a lot of space tourists, suborbital flights, that will happen, but this is not, like I said, not really space, but we will also see the real orbital flights with billionaires going to the space station, that will happen already this year. Uh, there are several companies that want to have uh, an own space station, including hotel, so that will be possible to stay up there for, uh, say, a week in orbit around the planet. Uh, 
um, there are already plans to fly around the moon with tourists so that will happen as well uh, I think we will see landings on the moon but only of professional astronauts uh, America Europe Japan Canada uh, maybe the Chinese will also land on the moon with humans so that will happen and I think it's a bit too early to expect already people on Mars in 10 years um, but uh, for sure uh, a lot of things will uh, will develop with uh, with companies we will see Boeing sending people to the space station as well so then uh, we have three spacecraft that can bring people to, uh, to the space station uh, so that's a good development interesting yeah uh, what would you say to your viewers on YouTube for hardware plus audience I think that if L last thoughts yes um, well actually for everybody who has a passion uh, follow it never tell yourself that you cannot do something uh, always do your best to get to reach something if it fails okay then you can continue and do something else but don't don't uh, uh, say to yourself that you cannot do it so that's an important one and important if you want to reach something where, where, where do you want to be in 10 years from now and then what do I have to do now to reach that so that's an important one you have to make steps long ahead to reach something in education or in a physical condition or uh, things like that so that's these are important things and I will not be surprised if uh, anybody who is, who is watching this that uh, will find himself back in space uh, sometime from now I assume that this is what you have done so thank you for the interview uh, thank you we are really appreciate to have you here uh, we are really grateful uh, thank you for coming to turkey uh, thanks a lot it was very nice it's very nice to be here and uh, for all these enthusiastic people and uh, i really hope uh, turkey is continuing and doing a lot of things in space including humans thank you thank you very much eight kilometers per second that's the speed that you need to stay in orbit and then we fly to the International Space Station. International Space Station is as big as a soccer field, 80 by 100 meters. It has the content of a big aeroplane, so, so 1200 cubic meters, and big solar panels for the energy. And here we can see the station with a European part, a Japanese part, American part and a Russian part, and this is a European spacecraft, a cargo ship. And then, if you are falling around the Earth, that's what you're doing, you are weightless. There is no weight, there is no up and down, so you have to get used to that. But it's also very nice, it's very nice to float like a fish in the water. And what do we do on board? Will we move things around, for example? Uh, we do experiments, um, uh, we are movers, if cargo ships are coming. We do cleaning, like at home, we have to clean the space station. We do inspections, to see if there's no leaks and things like that. Um, repairs, things break down, like at home. And of course, we do experiments. All kinds of experiments, in the European module, biology in the Russian module, for example, detects radiation from space, in the Japanese module with fluid physics, not only for universities, also for industries. For example, this is for the oil industry, special experiments. Hell, very fundamental sometimes. Experiments for the whole Earth to, de to see if we can have better computer models to, uh, to, uh, to, to see if there's earthquakes coming. And medical experiments. We are test subjects all the time for all kinds of medical experiments. We don't do this alone, we do this together with our colleagues. Astronauts are the hands and the eyes of the people on the ground. We are a big team. We're constantly talking with the engineers in Houston, in Moscow, Tokyo, Munich, all these people are working together to make it all happen. Now, if you float in space, you become very weak because you don't use your muscles. You don't have to stand, you don't have to walk. It's like lying in your bed for half a year. So to prevent that you become too weak, 
we do a lot of exercise. This picture is not wrong because there's no up and down. And the treadmill is on the wall. We run on the wall every day, for example. So we have to do exercise two hours per day to stay fit. Education, very important, like the exhibition here, very important to stimulate young people to show that science and technology is something interesting, something fun. So we had a lot of experiments on board that we did with schools, with fluids, with foam, to see how plants were growing in space. And we have our operational tasks, other spacecraft that are coming, how to take care of that. That's exciting. You don't want this to hit you. So we have to be careful, control, take with a robotic arm, get the spacecraft and bring it to the space station. And, of course, we eat now and then, which is always nice, it's fun. Here on Earth we learn, uh, we tell our children, don't play with your food. Well, in <laughs> space we do it all the time. And uh, we can do this, kind. don't do this at home. Don't do this at home. But in space you can nicely drink your, uh, your liquids from, uh, from the air. So that's always nice to do. And this is how you can wash yourself. Just some water, because it doesn't go down, it stays on you. So it's a very interesting environment, the floating. And of course, one of the interesting things, sleeping. How do you sleep? There is no up and down. You can sleep on the ceiling as well. So it's a very strange world, you have to get used to it. But maybe one of the nicest things, besides floating and these liquids, is looking out of the window. We have a beautiful place called the Cupola. In the exhibition you see a very nice, uh, it starts with that and it's a magical place. So windows all around and the earth is fantastic. Beautiful colors, for example, here you see the Bahamas, this beautiful, uh, uh, this beautiful colors, you see Florida and, uh, and Cuba, you see over there, very interesting to see. Australia, and of course, I looked at your country as well. Here we fly over the Mediterranean, and there, of course, we have Turkey. Yes, yes, here we are at the moment. So it's very nice to see that, of course, from space. You see the Earth move under you with the speed, like you see from the from a, from a plane. So we have very good cameras, and it's very nice to take pictures here of Istanbul, for example. And here we float over the Mediterranean. Here on the left you have Antalya, for example, it's over there. It's Cyprus you see over there. On the right you see the Nile River in Cairo and the Red Sea. So this is how you see the bird move under you. Now half of the time we are always at the night side. And then if you're lucky you have the northern light or the southern light. It's beautiful to fly over these this green curtains. And then, of course, the Earth at night with all the cities. I don't know if you see it, we fly here over the Black Sea, and here in the center is Istanbul. Here is Ankara, you see it there, so you can nicely see where we are at the moment. On the right you see Romania with Bucharest, and here, well, hopefully you find your own place, if you can. But the cities are fantastic to see from space. A great time! in space. Beautiful, interesting, useful for the people on planet Earth, but one day you have to go back. You go in your Soyuz, you leave, slowly you float away, and then we have to return. When we're flying here over the Atlantic, you put the engine on, and then you start the descent, and you go lower for 400, 300, 200, and then somewhere over Turkey at 100 kilometers. When we are over this country, you are already descending to 100 kilometers. There, you start to move into the thick layers of air. And you start like a duck on the water, you break. You get friction, it becomes 2000 degrees. You see flames along the window. You become pushed in your chair. You push to your chair with four to five times your body weight. So it's a fireball. You go through the atmosphere, and then at 10 kilometers altitude over Kazakhstan, the parachute opens, and finally, with the Big Bang, you land on the ground. 
Of course, you have been weightless for a long time, so you're weak, they carry you out of the capsule. But it's a fantastic adventure to go there, to do all the research that you did. Space flight is continuing, as we know. We have companies now participating, and it's a beautiful adventure. And you can all see that in this exhibition. The past, the first ideas, because you need dreamers. If you want to reach something, you need dreamers. You need people who think, the scientists, then people who build things, engineers, technicians, and you also need some daredevils who are crazy enough to sit in the rocket and go to space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andreas. This amazing presentation.